Anyway, so keep reading, keep reading this book. Don't, there's probably the only one in circulation. It's not even in circulation, it's in my house. It's in my circulatory feed, in that it's in my blood. I don't know where I'm going with this. Hey, welcome to another episode of Lost in the Pond. I'm Lawrence Brown. Now, if you've been following this channel for quite some time, you'll know that I have a deep, deep appreciation of the United States, especially having lived here now for almost 11 years. It's getting on, isn't it, for that? But my appreciation goes back much further than 11 years. It goes back to my childhood when I was a, a child with a hood. Never wore one, actually. But what I did do is I borrowed this book from my library, my school library, when I was 12 years old. I say borrowed, I sort of partially stole it and never gave it back. I think. I mean, there's a part of my memory that says I actually had it over a dollar fifty, a pound fifty, and they let me keep it. So I'm going with that story for now. Anyway, you may have seen a video I did a couple of years ago about this very book and what it meant to me at the time, that time being, for the record, 18th of November 1993. That was my 12th birthday, actually, as it happens. And I've had it ever since. And uh, it was really interesting going back through this book very recently, right? So when I first did this video, there were quite a number of states that I still hadn't been to that I have since been to. And I looked them up in this book. So the basic premise of this book is it is basically America in pictures from above right and so you've got all of the states in here there's Hawaii looking very volcanic and uh, it just sort of lays it out in pictures so for the child in me when I read this book of course it gave me a sense for America but a very superficial sense superficial in the sense that I didn't I didn't experience these places I didn't know what it was like to live there or experienced a kind of lived in uh, notion of these places to experience the climate, the culture, the food and all of that. It really was just a visual representation of each of these states and I've come to find not necessarily a very diverse uh, look at each of the states. In fact, if we take a look at the state of Nebraska, I've never been, but the state of Nebraska, I'm sure there's a little more to it than these three images that look very, very similar to each other. Um, and so there are th things like that throughout, but of course when you're a kid and you've never visited these places and you're just seeing them for the first time in a book, um, that becomes your impression of that state. So I thought, for example, I thought that the entire state of Mississippi was beaches because that's how it's more or less uh, portrayed in this book. I got Cleethorpes vibes. Cleethorpes is the, the coastal town that I was born in and grew up next to. But I gather, even though I've never been to Mississippi, that it is not entirely coastal. Although it was an amateur photographer and I don't know that he had the uh, the budget to cover the entire state. Nonetheless, you know, it tipped me off at least to the fact that Mississippi was on a coast somewhere. I think at that time, I didn't have the sort of geographic wherewithal to be able to pinpoint the location of every single state in the Union, even though I should have done because there is a very informative map at the beginning of the book. But even if it doesn't paint the whole picture of America, it did at least pique my interest in the terrain and, and some of its mountains and flatlands and really white buildings, lots of them, not just the White House. And like I said a moment ago, you know, reading it today, I realize how, how sort of superficial an entry point this was to sort of United States knowledge that I've come to supplement with actual lived in experiences of going to some of these places. So for example, you know, when I was a kid, uh, I remember seeing these three objects in the book and thinking, oh, they're curiously shaped, right? That, that's in Wisconsin. It is the uh, Mitchell Observatory in Milwaukee. And we went there in 2017 in the winter. It was very cold out and the tops of those domes got particularly hard. So just don't go there. It was just, it was condensation freezing over. That's all it was. Um, and it was really nice, really fun little conservatory. Um, but you know, just seeing this aerially, it looks kind of industrial or, or something that uh, doesn't seem very touristy from the top, at least to a child looking at that. As a child, you want, you want the theme parks, don't you? And all of that kind of thing. But when you get older, gardening's more your thing. And so I found myself at a place that I never imagined when reading this book when I was um, a young man. Uh, scene two, actually, if we flip to Ohio, this building that I imagine, and I don't really remember fully, but I imagine to my, my child eyes, I would have paid no interest 
in this. It wasn't one of the iconic sites like the Golden Gate Bridge. It wasn't kind of a, a coastal or mountainous area that catches the eye. It was just these two uh, barn looking buildings. But I, I, I've been there. In fact, uh, Tara, myself and her family when there's the US Air Force Museum in Dayton. Staggering, staggering museum. Absolutely huge. And uh, again, I think flipping through this, because o Ohio, weirdly, this is kind of harsh on Ohio, same with North Dakota, only gets one page, whereas virtually every other state gets two pages. New York gets three. It gets two just for New York City. That's greedy. Um, so Ohio might have been one of those pages that I just very quickly skipped, uh, skipped past because it doesn't look like there's much on show. If you're a kid and you're looking at these things, you're just thinking, uh, again, where's the theme park stuff? You know, you can get to Florida and, of course, Disney World. I'd already been there at that point, but it was still interesting to me. So it, it's really interesting, and I think that this book will continue as my journey around the United States continues it will continue to be a kind of, I don't know, a reflective focal point for me to look back on my childhood and my sort of interest in this book and to marry up those sort of superficial images I had as a child of the US with actual experiences of it. I don't know that when I was reading this book, which has a fantastic plot, by the way, America, 1978. I don't think that I thought I'd get to most of these states. I think I dreamed perhaps that I would, not literally, but I think I hoped that it could happen. Obviously I'm attempting it now in my adult years without a car. That's always difficult. But, you know, I'm living the dream. You know, and it might be a dream without a front cover. I lost the sleeve. Don't know what I'm going to do about that. But it's one that's ongoing. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be able to put that to the test in the next few months because I'm going to take this book with me to two new places. I'm very excited. Can you guess what they are? I put a poll out a bit ago and you, you most of you were wrong. I'm in fact going to this place. Oh yeah, Washington DC, capital city of the United States of America. That will be my second world capital in the year. So that's something I don't think I've ever done before. Uh, so that's really exciting. We're actually going there to see some friends that we've not seen in many years. Months actually, they were here in Chicago a few months ago. It's really not that exciting anymore. Anyway, I'm joking. We're going to go also to a nearby state, that state being Maryland. Let's take a look at Maryland, actually, because I don't remember really passing it in here. And that's because that's all, all you get on Maryland. Lots of grenliness. That's always nice. Um, but I'm sure there's more to Maryland than that, including the Ren Fest that we're going to go to. And Tara is convinced that she's going to dress me up as something from the Renaissance period. So look out for that. I, I might let her film. I don't know. That should be fun. Anyway, so keep reading. Keep reading this book. Don't. There's probably the only one in circulation. It's not even in circulation. It's in my house. It's in my circulatory feed. In that it's in my blood. I don't know where I'm going with this. I am going to go. I'm going to go and plan for our trip to Washington DC. She's doing most of the planning actually, so that's a lie. Um, and I'm gonna go and get excited. All right, thanks for watching. Happy day of the week, and I will see you with the next video. Bye. Got an audience. Keep it going. I don't... <laughs> It feels awkward if you just stop while I'm smiling. I don't have anything lined up. Thank you for watching this episode of Lost in the Pond. Don't forget to hit my stupid little face to subscribe and please share this video with the world. Hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And if you would like to support this channel, please do so at patreon.com slash lostinthepond.